There's been criticism in Morocco of the speed of the official response to Friday's earthquake, which is now known to have killed more than 2,800 people. Heavy lifting equipment has begun to arrive in the remote regions of the Atlas Mountains, which has been the hardest hit. Our Middle East correspondent Tom Bateman has filed this update from Marrakesh. It has been a fourth night out in the open for tens of thousands of people across this region. Where we are now is in Marrakesh, less affected than the high Atlas Mountains where we were making our way yesterday. But even here, there are damaged homes. I was speaking to one woman who said that her house is cracked and badly damaged and she simply doesn't want to spend another night there for fear of aftershocks because of course in previous quakes that's exactly when buildings can come down if they've been damaged by the initial earthquake itself. Now she said that she's brought her four children here, her disabled brother and they're simply at the moment having to fend for themselves. There was no official aid, there's been no official help uh, for them here, she said. And that is a scene that we're seeing replicated in many parts, particularly uh, across the mountains. And we spent the day there yesterday getting into some of the most um, remote areas. And while in the big towns, particularly in a place, place called Asni, we were seeing a military response, uh, we were seeing formal aid, we were seeing that really crucially important heavy equipment diggers that you need in the crucial hours and uh, days after an earthquake to lift the rubble. That was starting to be deployed and we were seeing it in some villages as well. But as soon as you get to those more remote areas, there was absolutely none of that at all. So there have been these growing voices that there wasn't the urgency, it didn't feel for people like there was the urgency with the official uh, response that was critically needed. Now the Moroccan government says that it has been uh, doing a very quick and rapid response. Its military has been deployed since the earthquake on Friday and into Saturday. But at the moment there's still only been four countries that have had an official request from the Moroc Moroccans to come here. They are starting to be deployed. But it still remains the case that in some of those most remote areas, people desperately need more help. Well, that's Tom Bateman in Marrakesh. MSF Doctors Without Borders have a team in Marrakesh at the moment. And I'm joined now by their emergency coordinator, John Johnson. Thank you very much for joining us, John. Clearly, you've got a huge task ahead of you. Tell us a little bit about the challenges that you're facing. Well, um, I, I guess we're facing the same challenges as everybody else. We, we arrived here on Saturday night, um, you know, trying to figure out where the problems are. Um, it's easy to identify the, the bigger villages uh, that have been hardest hit, uh, and that's where all the responders are going. But like uh, the commentator said earlier, it's the villages that are, are, are a little bit harder to identify, that are uh, a bit lost in the mountains, um, where it's hard to reach. And, and that's, you know, where we're, we're trying to find where we can be of help as well uh, in the places that are not on core uh, reached by the, not yet, sorry, uh, reached by the, um, by the uh, search and rescue teams. And what is it that is quite essential in terms of the equipment and help that you need at the moment? We spoke to a charity a little bit earlier on and they said that in the area that they're working in, they aren't um, accompanied by any other sort of authority or any other sort of charity groups, it's just them. So it seems like resources are scarce at the moment. I don't know. I, I think it depends on where they are uh, and how it's distributed. If you if you look uh, at the overall response, it's been it's been impressive. Uh, there's been a massive response by the Moroccan military. Uh, there are ambulances that are driving all around uh, the area around the earthquake to to find victims. You see distribution of water, food, uh, non-food items. Uh, People are, of course, are still sleeping outside, but uh, it depends on where you look. There's, there's been a very strong response in certain areas, and then I think certain areas just haven't uh, been reached yet. And I think a lot of that has to do with the access. We're, we're high up in the mountains. Uh, some of these villages are only reachable by foot or, uh, or by donkey, so it's, uh, it's hard to get to. And in terms of um, the kind of the, the, the hospitals and the blood donations, we heard early on when the. Uh, the news of the earthquake first broke, that that was something that authorities were sort of urging people to do, to, to donate blood, to go to their local hospitals and, and help with the search and rescue mission. What's the situation now? There's been a large outpouring of solidarity from the Moroccan people. Uh, you, you've had blood donations, of course. You've had uh, doctors and nurses from all over the country that have uh, come to the area to help out. Um, 
uh, of their own goodwill, uh, you you see uh, a big response. And, and places where we arrived, you know, the first night, and there were no human resources to, to treat the patients. Now there's a system that's been put in place. Uh, you have you have more than enough uh, staff in certain places at the clinics, uh, but there's still a, a few needs to be reached. And, um, you know, we've talked a lot about the scale uh, in terms of the reports that we're getting of the, the missing people and the people that have sadly lost their lives. Um, we also hear about reports that people are too afraid to stay in their homes and they're worried about tremors that might follow. What are you seeing? I mean, in the smaller villages uh, that we visited, they, they've been completely leveled. There's nowhere to stay inside. Uh, in, in some of the bigger villages that have um, more modern structures, those structures are still cracked and, and broken and could fall uh, if there is an aftershock. Uh, and they'll need to be destroyed. They'll need to be leveled and, and rebuilt. So I, I think in a lot of these villages really close to the epicenter, there, there's not a good choice but to sleep outside. And it's going to take time to rebuild uh, their homes. And you've presumably dealt with these sort of disasters before in the past and, and similar situations. How does this compare to um, other trips that you've, you've made? But this is certainly the, the most devastation I've seen uh, in, in terms of uh, in terms of material damage uh, in such a short period of time. Um, at the same time, a, a lot of deaths, uh, the 2,800 that have been reported so far, um, and, and a lot of wounded, but at the same time, uh, as the days go by, uh, the situation in, in terms of the medical situation gets better and better. Um, and, and right now, for the moment, the, the most urgent needs uh, are being reached for the people that they can reach. Okay. All yeah. right, well, John, thank you very much for joining us. John Johnson there, who's out in Marrakesh, part of the search and rescue mission with Doctors Without Borders.